Hello YouTube, welcome back to Panzerkorps with Leutnant Joker, still on sea line this time on Rommel difficulty. And here you can see the unit overview again, as I said last time, main, main difference is in the infantry and the SE forces. So, not a lot to say here, I'll say a little bit more about Guderian and Manstein since that's the biggest difference. So, let's jump right back into the deployment here. Not a whole lot that I'm going to do differently, um, mostly my scout is a little weaker, the infantry is a slight bit different, uh, but my main tactics are pretty much the same. Except uh, taking damage will be a whole lot more expensive this time around. So I'll try to avoid that. That was a good hit. That's something great if you can take out that destroyer that quickly. Otherwise, same as always, trying to blockade the Royal Navy from moving into the channel. Hopefully taking out all the destroyers that can actually spot anything and then just uh, trying to stay out of radar range where I can and where I can't keep the ships away that can actually be dangerous to me. Using the U-boats as a spotter here, great hit there with my bomber. And unfortunately, wasn't such a great hit on that uh, battleship, but uh, oh well. Do what I can. Trying to uh, do my best to get rid of these destroyers. While using my level bombers mostly on the heavy ships and where if I have some left I'm gonna use them anywhere else. The destroyers serve, as I said last time, mostly as a roadblock. But if I can do damage with them that's uh, of course fine as well. But um, just moving them in so even if one of them gets destroyed the big ships still cannot move in. Because at the Dover area, we really need to land relatively quickly. So I need to keep these ships away from there so that I can move in my landing forces at turn 2. Uh, I mean, some of them here I'm already moving in at turn 1, but most of them will move in to radar range at turn 2 and uh, then... I really don't want to get uh, destroyed because one battleship was able to move in. Just laying a few traps here with my fighters, but uh, the radar towers make that very difficult. So there's not a whole lot of opportunities for that. Otherwise just keeping my bombers safe. And then uh, that unfortunately was a one hit kill. Uh, that can happen. But... Uh, as long as not more of my destroyers get destroyed. Here, see, that that is something that you don't want to happen, but uh, thankfully that guy was already so da damaged that he couldn't do anything anymore. But now I'm running a little low on destroyers, so I really need to take care of those forces. Otherwise, we're in a little bit of trouble here. Also, I don't want to take too much damage on my own U-boats. But uh, overall, I'm happy if they go for my U-boats, technically. Also these bombers, especially if they hardly do anything. And uh, there he feels confident attacking my fighter directly. Which, uh, since he didn't do that much damage, is actually an advantage. This guy as well, he got damaged by a ship. Every fighter that gets damaged on their turn is a fighter less that I need to damage on my turn to force to retreat. So uh, that kind of thing is nice. But uh, yeah, from now on, whenever I face Western Air Forces, I need to be careful not to use my green fighters uh, in a position where they're visible during the enemy turn, otherwise they will attack them. And uh, if they can gang up on them, they can absolutely take them out. Now this battleship absolutely needs to go. 
Or at least be weakened to the point where it can't do anything anymore. And I definitely want to get rid of all the destroyers. They're not that dangerous, but they spot stuff and they can still be very dangerous to my transport ships. So we cleaned out the channel, now we just need to prevent this guy from moving into position. So it would be really cool if I could take him out. Yeah, there we go. And uh, now hopefully I can take out these destroyers or at least prevent them from becoming a big problem. So I will probably just move in a couple of ships to uh, keep them busy. Doing my best here with my torpedo boat to damage them further. And now it's time to damage, hopefully, all of the enemy air force. Trying my uh, best here to position myself in such a way that I can damage everything. Which isn't always possible, but uh, if I can do it, uh, at least I have a better chance now since... Um, See, I have to f attack here through the fighter cover to be able to damage that bomber. And, um... If I'm able to damage everything... Then, uh, I will be good. And since two of their fighters got damaged during their turn, I was actually able to do that. Now I have basically two turns free reign, since uh, they have to retreat one turn and then repair another before they are ready to fight again. And this time I need to be careful that I don't miss that time when they are ready to fight again, because last time I did, and that uh, nearly cost me my uh, fighter bomber and almost, well, not lost, not almost got me a bomber lost, but one of them got damaged, and that is not exactly cheap. Uh, on Field Marshal I could afford that, on Rommel I really can't, even on Field Marshal I shouldn't do that all the time. Because the US scenarios later on will be very expensive if I reach them, so... I, uh, should try and avoid that. Now their fleet is retreating, so I can box them in there. That's a good thing, and as you can see the Royal Air Force is completely retreating. Now this wasn't so great. Told you you can position the Stuck forward, well, next to tanks, uh, that's a little difficult, but again, uh, usually they have the defense values of a Panther 3, so this was, it was an unlucky hit. Usually a Stuck, even against one of these tanks, usually can take more of a beating, so I was a little bit unlucky here. Um, there's still no chance that tank could take this Stuck completely out. Or even force to surrender here, but yeah, this usually I would have expected one point of damage that it took four. That was pretty unlucky. But against any heavier tanks, especially later Russian tanks, you sh certainly shouldn't uh, put your Stug in line of fire. The Stug is meant to support against other infantry. It's supposed to support infantry against other infantry. That's what its main job is supposed to be. So these guys are now effectively boxed in. I should actually be able to take that U-boat uh, out with my... Uh, or that submarine out with my torpedo boat. Otherwise I'll just continue bombarding here. My heavy ships don't have anything to do anymore so they can help dig out the infantry in the coastal towns. Which is actually a big help, you should absolutely use your navy for that as much as you can once the enemy navy has been taken out because uh, this will save you so much time later with your actual ground forces. Um, it's really amazing um, how effective this is. You can also suppress like nuts if you have these battleships. Ah, it evaded. Oh well. If you have these battleships, uh, you can do a whole lot of suppression. And you can so force, force surrenders left and right. Also, you should try and give your fighters something to do every single turn. Uh, of course, not if they have to refuel and stuff like that. But otherwise, 
uh, always try to give them something to do. Um, they will gain experience so much faster that way. And they can also help digging out uh, units. Always uh, attack units. So of course, not attack anything that has anti-aircraft defense. Uh, that is not a good thing. That's just not worth it. But everything that can shoot back, attack it. It's absolutely worth it. And it saves you a lot of time. Also, of course, force surrenders wherever you can. Not only does give does that give you additional prestige on Rommel, um, which was actually a very good patch that they did that. That surrendered units give you prestige, but it's 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 a very very good mechanic on Rommel. It gives you so much opportunity to make additional prestige, which you just don't have on these um, difficulty level. So uh, it's absolutely worth doing. Putting the artillery here right next to the infantry is a little risk, but I'm protecting it with my Stug. So, uh, which is visible to the other infantry, so it should be discouraged from actually going for it. My truck here, however, is also in visible range, so I'm not 100% sure why I did that. Maybe I was trying to lure that infantry out of the city, but I actually doubt it will move. Because that, that would be something not worth it, at least not on Rommel, because it still could do a lot of damage to me. Trying to get all my transport into a position where I can deploy them next turn. And uh, now I'm a little bit of trouble. I just spotted there's actually a whole lot of resistance here. Uh, much more than last time, so I'm a little outnumbered there. So, that is something that I did not like to see. So, I need to uh, quickly come up with a solution for that problem. Since, uh, just like on Field Marshal, I do not have additional Falchimjägers. So, that is a really big problem for me right now. Uh, Bristol, I might not actually be able to take. Here, I'm risking damage from the cruiser because I'm really running short on time. So, uh, risking taking a uh, point of damage, but I need to get close to the coast. And finally, taking out this guy, so now the uh, Royal Navy is gone. At least uh, everything that wasn't a channel. So now we have free reign here. And now two artillery are taking pot shots at my Falchimirgas, and you can see... That is not looking good over there, and I'm not really a big fan of uh, soft uh, green reinforcing them. I mean, I can do that, but uh, yeah, if I do that too often, I'm losing a lot of prestige here. And if you look at the top right corner, we have about five prestige, so I don't even have the prestige right now to support these guys. So now they're almost gone, and uh, I really need to come up with a different solution there. Otherwise, we're in big trouble. So deploying infantry and artillery, uh, infantry and tank I mean, putting my artillery in the back so I can deploy them next time. I kept them out of reach because I don't want them to take damage, the artillery is really really necessary for me right now. Going for a surrender here, just to keep this uh, attack effective. And efficient, and then uh, we're gonna try and take that last infantry out with our tank destroyer here. Could go for a surrender here, but it's not really happening since it's just gonna be destroyed. But in case I didn't destroy it and just push it back, it just uh, moved in that position, so it would still have gone, still have been gone. I need to be a little bit careful because the uh, Royal Air Force is probably going to be back. Always trying to get rid of these radar stations as quick as possible. Both to uh, prevent them from seeing me. And now I think about uh, actually protecting my stuff. Because the Royal Air Force will be back. So I'm retreating my Falchimagas for now. 
because they obviously can't do anything back there. So I'm changing my plan. I'm probably going for the coastal town first. And then I'll need to come up with a completely different plan for taking Bristol. The unexpected uh, resistance there. Um, recon has let us down, so to speak. Intelligence. Intelligence has let us down. We need to change our plan on the fly. Oh, that was a big hit that I did not like to take, but better that than the bombers concentrating on my ground forces. Ah, and he's attacking my bomber. He sees that I have weak defenses here, so uh, that could have been dangerous if another fighter had been in range, but... Um, Oh well, I'll have to live with that. No oh, more more movement on the infantry is actually not bad. But now my bomber is pretty damaged. That I did not like that. That is an expensive bomber. I would have liked to avoid that. But I couldn't, so um, I defended it probably with my greenest, most damaged fighter. Uh, but I guess it was the only one in range, but uh, yeah, this was not a good result for me. So it's not going great. We run into quite a lot of problems. Royal Air Force fighting more strongly than I thought and Bristol offering way more resistance than I thought. So not happy with this. Still taking out this radar tower though. But now we need to move the tanks into Bristol before we can do anything there, and we also need a lot of artillery there, so we need to draw away some of the forces from London, which will not make London a lot easier, but uh, let's see how it goes. And I had to reinforce those Falchimiegers, even though I really didn't want to spend the prestige. Um, we had it now, but um, I wasn't really happy about spending it. It's, not, it's only a tiny amount, but on Rommel that actually adds up. That uh, da damaged bomber is also not exactly great. That will definitely be a major cost factor in this thing. But uh, sea line is a hard scenario. Stuff can easily go wrong here. And um, doing this perfectly without taking any losses is not exactly easy. I'm a little slow here on my approach to London, so I'm not, uh, I don't have the support that I want to have. I had two completely wasted bomber attacks, that was great. Also that some of the fighters are still doing escort duty instead of attacking me is also great. But now I really need to be careful. That these guys actually moved, I'm taking a lot of damage here, but that these guys actually moved out of position is kind of good for me since uh, that will save me a lot of time digging them out. Now here I can use my Air Force support and some of my naval support to hopefully attack these guys relatively quickly. Uh, so my Falchimegas can at least do some work here. But since they can't attack Rusl, I might as well put them to work here so at least their uh, turns that they have to wait until they can do anything at Bristol isn't completely wasted. If we take that uh, victory hex or another one, isn't doesn't really matter. We need to eventually take this stuff anyway. So at least I'm not losing too much time here. We're still using them effectively. If not where I wanted them to use. So now, again, trying to get rid of that anti-tank gun. First of all, Using the opportunity that these guys moved and moved into hills, which is not exactly the best position to defend against enemy infantry. Pushing them back, moving in here, and this is pretty much their death sentence now. And now I should be able to move another tank in there, bombard this thing, and then hopefully be able to take it out completely. It's one hit. And the next hit should take it out. So that's one anti-aircraft gun gone. Uh, the infantry in that town is severely weakened and surrounded by three units, so that won't be able to reinforce. Uh, but we already have very damaged units there, so I needed to reinforce one of my infantry units. 
Uh, I'm doing this here, uh, that crazy attack that I did there, a little bit out of desperation because I know I need to free my tanks. So I need to attack there quickly, um, get all these flanking positions destroyed a little quicker than I originally intended, just to free up my tanks because I need them now near Bristol. Because that might really be uh, the biggest time critical action here. Bristol is now a major problem. And the longer I wait, the more th those guys will dig in. So I really need to get over there. I will also have to draw away some artillery, which will hurt me even more, since I really don't have it. And none of my ships are able to reach Bristol. They only have them in the channel, so I can't move around there. My artillery getting hit here so badly is not exactly great either, but I had to move that artillery in place. Probably not the best approach to London I could have made, but uh, I'm a little bit desperate at this point because Bristol went completely wrong. So I'm doing a little bit of uh, desperation tax here. I'm trying to get rid of that last anti-aircraft gun. S suppressing the artillery a little bit. So my tanks can actually get to work. Now that should push that guy out. Nope. But it should still be gone. There we go. Then I should be able to move another tank in. Not sure whether I'm actually going to do that though. Since I kind of need the tank somewhere else. Also trying to uh, attack through the artillery here while it's being suppressed. Which at the same time drains its ammunition. And that was a nice little attack here which uh, also drained it completely out of ammunition. So now there's only one artillery left for one turn and uh, in that turn I will probably be able to destroy the one that's now out of ammunition. Well this train moved again up here. I've rarely seen it do that but uh, I guess sometimes it does do that. So now I'm trying to box it in. If it doesn't move away from there I will be able to completely box it in next time and then force the surrender. It's actually very easy to do with uh, trains if you can block both of the hexes with the rails since they only can move on rails it's very easy to surround them um, up there it's a little cramped up because of all the other units in the area but if I can move the tank on the other hex with the rails on them that train is gonna be doomed if I can suppress it enough Do my best here to force uh, the entrenchment down again. The anti-tank gun is pretty much doomed already since it moved into the town. Anti-tank guns in the, in the town are pretty much uh, not able to withstand infantry attacks. At least not unless they're really, really, really entrenched. And even then, Falchimjägers or Pioneers are usually so strong in their attacks that uh, they basically cannot resist that. Already going for the Matilda. And doing everything to dig these guys out so my Falchmagers are free again. So I will be able to go for a concentrated attack on Bristol with everything I got when I'm ready. Moving the infantry out, which puts them in a very vulnerable position. Thankfully that artillery hit didn't do anything. Unfortunately that did, but not a whole lot. That also did nothing. And the rest of the Royal Air Force is still too damaged to do anything. So I actually got into position. 
try to do my do the best to suppress it here and hopefully this is a surrender unfortunately it isn't but uh, at least we were able to run it out of ammo so this guy uh, should now be completely useless already moving in here since I can foresee that I will be able to move into position now actually starting to work on getting the Royal Air Force out of the picture completely unfortunately that didn't do anything probably because it's cloudy not actually sure whether fighter against fighter is also uh, less effective in cloudy weather or just uh, ground attacks but I'm pretty sure considering these results that the cloudy weather is responsible for this now that's one with another attack from the tank that will be two and it should be easy for me now to take this and as you can see the uh, artillery was positioned there since I knew I was gonna be able to break through and move in front of it I saw there that I uh, couldn't suppress that thing enough to be effective with my um, tank destroyer getting really annoyed here with this infantry because I di really didn't want to waste another infantry attack since running out of ammo will also be a little bit of an issue so I was very grateful that I could actually do it here with my ships because I'm already in big enough trouble here and I still have to take out these radar towers so I really want not to waste uh, any ammunition I might actually have uh, yeah, I should have probably not even attacked that radar tower, honestly, but... Um, still a little bit in panic mode for the Bristol situation. But as you can see, I'm all, I have a pretty f strong force moving there. The biggest problem at this point is not having enough artillery. But I still need all the artillery next to London, so we'll see how it goes. The Navy will not be effective there, but I might actually be able to do something with the Air Force if my tanks can take out the anti-aircraft guns. And I think there were some anti-aircraft guns. Still cloudy weather, so it's still not ideal weather for all this. But we were able to take it out but uh, the bomber attacks on the Matilda are just not effective under these circumstances so I'm hoping with a little suppression my tanks can actually do some stuff moving my tank destroyer also in position for a later attack on the Matilda and my main tank forces are moving towards Bristol reinforcing my infantry one last time giving them supplies so we can move in force uh, if the infantry arrives a little later it doesn't matter because there's still a lot of artillery there that my tanks need to take care of first just attacking this radar tower now with my infant with my uh, navy because they can't do anything else anymore nothing is in range so taking another peek with my uh, scout yeah, anti-tank guns. They're not big anti-tank guns, but I need to be a little careful about those as well. I really would need my Stuck back there, but the Stuck is still protecting the main assault on London. I could pull it actually out now. I mostly used the Stuck here because there was still enemy artillery in place. And now that that's not the case anymore, I would actually get by with my Toad artillery. But I am moving one toad artillery out of uh, reach, so, uh, out of place, so I might be able to work with that one. Now here I should have probably moved into a better position than, I, than this would have been a surrender. So that was a little stupid of me, but uh, it's again out of ammo, so it's not a huge deal. But I'm losing time destroying that thing, so surrender would have been better there. But I guess I wanted to keep my infantry um, in a movable position but um, 
now it moved up so now I need to waste the movement even more to get get back next to it so I'm not sure that was a wise decision here especially since my infantry can't do anything anyway since it's now out of ammo so going for the surrender on the train would probably have been the better choice in London we're just moving up slowly slowly and methodically as always, but I really should move my stock out of there now. We should be able to work without it now. Let me actually check whether I move it out. Yeah, I'm moving it out in support against the Matilda. And probably then move it up to support against Bristol as well. Not super effective against it, but every bit helps. Pushing it under the Stuka certainly helped. And now it's finally gone. Moving in the infantry, the Stuka already in position to defend it. And the Falchimirger is slowly moving in. Not sure whether I will actually attack that town in the south there, but uh, going for it anyway since I uh, kind of want to attack Bristol from the south so we're swinging by that town anyway and it should be easy to take since down there we can actually support with our naval forces so if I can damage them a lot or dig them out a lot um, I should be able to either destroy them outright or push them out of the city um, and we need all the prestige on Rommel so since we took quite a few losses being able to take that town might actually be worth it and it's on our way to Bristol anyway, since we want to attack it from the south, since that's the best approach right now. The damage on the fighters in this scenario is pretty much unavoidable. The uh, Royal Air Force is just too strong, also with the initial support from the radar towers. So um, that's not really avoidable. Those costs you just have to live with. And here I sh I'm pretty sure I should have gone for destruction of the train first. Actually moving up a, a Panzer already just to block some additional towns. Just because I'm a little bit in panic mode that because Bristol reinforced if now something else reinforces also. I'm really gonna be in trouble and now the, you see the train now reinforced to full. Uh, so that was probably a big mistake not taking that one out. Uh, but I was, again, a little bit in panic mode, trying to already think of Oxford, uh, getting artillery into position. And now I still have to deal with the stupid tank, uh, with the stupid um, armored train there. So that uh, annoyed me a little bit. That was a bad decision on my part. Things are going well on this front though, so I will be able to uh, go for both Ex Oxford and Bristol with quite a large enough force, but um, I'm still a little worried whether I will get everything in time. This train up here certainly doesn't help. I'm ignoring it for now, but it might become a problem for me, since those things actually have quite a bit of firepower. Since I can't really dig those guys out very well, I'm going for them with the Pioneers. I have enough uh, infantry dealing with London right now. Already trying to uh, attack the artillery and getting them out of the way. Now that town is ours. That gave us time to put the uh, infantry into position. So we should now be able to do a concentrated effort. And I can at least hit that one artillery with my battleship. So I might be able to do something about that thing. And uh, getting one artillery out of the way, that might be good. If it's adjacent to another artillery, then I will at least be able to suppress one of them. Whether there's anti-aircraft guns or not. And that could be very, very helpful. Now that artillery needs to go.
gone it is and now London is pretty much doomed. Moving forces towards Oxford. Completely ignoring that train up there now since it's it won't be able to uh, take back anything. The pioneers doing good work here. I want to take that town for additional prestige. Not sure whether it's worth the uh, damage that I'm taking on my pioneers here, but uh, it might. Now that's the victory hex that we could theoretically take. I'm not sure that I'm going to take it. Probably not. Since I can't really protect myself if I move in. And they don't have additional forces to move into defending it. If they move one of the other two units in, that will actually be to my advantage. Yeah, I'm going for a full surrender just to make sure this thing dies. Probably not going to force the surrender on this turn, but uh, I would have forced the surrender here if that attack hadn't been successful. Now the problem is I didn't have a unit that could actually move next to the town yet, so I'm hoping that it's not just going to replace that uh, thing immediately. But I was at least able to move immediately next to this town. So at least Oxford can't reinforce now. That was one of my biggest worries, why I wanted to get there as quickly as possible. Since I do not want to see any additional reinforcements anywhere right now. Last radar tower gone, so now the coast is completely clear in our hands. Oh, one of them actually moved into the victory axe. Now, here we are taking heavy damage on our tank, heavy infantry attacking it, and it actually did replace that unit. So we really need to be able to move next to the city now. Which should be able to do that now. But it would be better if we could actually move two units there. I'm trying to suppress this guy. And hoping this will be enough for a surrender, which it actually is, because now we can move two units next to the town. And now they shouldn't be able to push us out again. You're trying to get rid of this anti-aircraft gun. Unfortunately, it didn't retreat. Otherwise, we could have gotten it with the infantry. But uh, next time, we should be able to... Uh, get rid of it completely and then we can hopefully take care of the tank and the infantry. We only have one turn left so we're a little bit pressed for time here. Especially near Bristol, it's still not looking great. The positive thing is that we took out the, uh, the infantry and there's now an anti-tank gun defending the town which shouldn't be a problem for our Fallschirmjägers. Taking that town, moving in with the uh, better infantry. Now, I'm trying to attack that uh, train, but uh, it will probably survive. Which is a shame, we could have easily forced a surrender on it previously, or just taken it out completely after it was at one strength. So we had two opportunities to take it out, missed both of them, so that's not a good thing. But here we still have the problem that there's an unreachable artillery that we can't get to. So I'm hoping here that by suppressing both of these anti-aircraft guns, I can actually suppress the artillery or attack it. In either case, be able to take care of it. Because we really need to take care of this now. Here I'm moving in my stronger tank to take care of the anti-aircraft gun. Forcing a surrender. And now I am able to attack from this side. Which robbed the uh, artillery completely of its ammo. And now I can attack this completely undefended thing. And hopefully it surrenders. There we go. In we go. We have Bristol. Not exactly how I wanted that to go. 
that uh, we managed it in the nick of time with some clever attacks because this is the last turn we absolutely need to be able to get in here now now I probably won't be able to take care of this tank but maybe we can push it out of the way so my actual my actual infantry can attack the city attacking here very risky but I need those attacks because I need the entrenchment to go down going for a full on attack here now I can move my anti-tank unit in there I should take care of this guy if I'm lucky I can actually get rid of everything in this area that's the tank and I might even be able to push those guys out and take that airfield with my tank there we go unfortunately I wasn't able to take it out completely and here I'm just bombarding this thing which is still suppressed so it can't do any damage to me in the next turn now for the rest of London this I don't actually need to take more movement on my infantry that's always good but I obviously want to take it all since it's all prestige for me so now I'm pushing this guy back into the city the reason for that is there they will go for close defense which means they will actually have uh, less of an attack less of defense so I could do more damage to them and now we are able to take these last couple of hexes and this train can't do anything I can even ambush it here which is kind of cool this guy can't do anything since I bumped that guy he can't do anything either and this was a little shocker for me because I was oh crap this would have been a scenario restart but thankfully that guy wasn't actually able to take that tank out that was something that I completely missed uh, when I moved this tank out of the way so I could move the other tank in I of course shouldn't have moved it in reach of the anti-tank and so this could have been really really bad but I think uh, thanks to the hills the initiative of this guy was reduced so I think that's what actually saved me here I might be wrong about that but uh, it might have been just poor luck but uh, luck uh, yeah soldiers luck needs to be with you in war as well so we absolutely managed it in the nick of time took a lot more damage than I actually wanted to take but at least we uh, took all the hexes so that might well not all of them didn't take this one but uh, we took more than on the previous try so we might have gotten a little bit more prestige out of this uh, but it certainly didn't went optimal so uh, Rommel was already quite difficult with quite a few problems Bristol was a problem we uh, nearly lost a unit again just like last time with the fighter bomb and this time we nearly lost the tank so uh, still not optimal this was really stupid we should have forced to surrender on this guy but overall we achieved our target and we would have been able to defeat all the remaining units in the next turn so it looks good um, Guderian certainly won't be as easy because remember on Guderian we have to do this in five turns less so on Guderian we need to do this in ten turns now that will be fun and then comes Munstein where we have 15 strength ships waiting for us to cross the channel so those will be fun <laughs> I hope you're looking forward to that I certainly wasn't at the time so keep your heads up folks I'll see you on the next one